You want more Robert Williams? We got more Robert Williams, including Jason Tatum's quote that makes you think, yeah, Rob is going to start, and it's going to ha- happen pretty soon. Uh, Joe Missoula loves semantics. We'll explain why that's tied to Robert Williams. And we all just need to chill. A little conversation about why the Celtics struggle against these bad teams sometimes and what our responsibility is. It's all right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corrales above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I am here for you every day, Monday through Friday, with a free, fresh podcast, it's a podcast, it's what it's called, drop directly to your device, whatever device you use, whatever podcasting app you decide to listen on, whenever a podcast drops, if you're a subscriber, so subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And also watch a show on YouTube. It's actually a fun place to watch a show. It's a fun place to participate in the in the comment section there. Thanks for making the show your first listen. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. I played professionally once upon a long time ago. And today, we're here for you to talk a little bit about something that uh, I did, kind of brushed on a couple of these topics in the uh, aftermath of a bonus podcast. Uh, one of the things, Jason Tatum had, had a, a quote that, was, I'll call it uh, revelatory, uh, revealing, something like that. And it really kind of sends a message that I think maybe it's us. Maybe we need to chill out. Uh, but I promised in the, in the post-game podcast that we're, we got to talk about Robert Williams and another Jason Tatum quote in the Robert Williams uh, discussion that uh, I felt was important. And to do so, I'm going to bring in my guy, Tom Westerholm, Tom underscore NBA, on the tweets. What's going on, Tom? I'm just kidding. Your internet's fine this time. <laughs> oh, Tom underscore jackass. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> it's, <laughs> um, yeah, this is a second attempt, second attempt at the podcast. Luckily, we caught the first attempt right about here, right about this. Right, this, right, right. this was where we caught it. And we're like, John, your internet sucks. So we'll do, you know, make this makes me a, a technician. Uh, unplug it and uh, plug it back in. And now it's fine. Yeah. yeah. It works, works. That's it's cool. good. That's, 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 uh, the tried and true. It's a start it again. Okay. No yeah. problem. Yeah. So <laughs> let's get into the Robert Williams discussion because we've had this talk before. Should Rob start? Should he not start? When we, you know, we, we kind of went back and forth. Let's, let's just start with this. His performance against the Spurs was fantastic his defense has has been great and if it wasn't for robert williams defensively the celtics we'd be we'd be sitting here talking about a loss to the spurs yeah yeah i think that's extremely fair i mean like you you look especially in the second half the way they were just going directly to the rim you know everything was um everything looked comfortable in rhythm until rob's in the game uh rob makes everything so much harder um you know inside the three-point line He's, I mean, he's been, he's been really good and, and it's been in a bunch of different ways. You know, it's obviously on the defensive end offensively, you know, he, he makes, he makes things smoother. He, um, you know, just adds that extra element, all the stuff that we've talked about a million times, we are seeing it. And I think that's, what's most encouraging to me about what he's been doing and his performance so far is just like, he's, he's like all, all the concerns about his knee, all the concerns about, um, you know, will he be able to stay healthy, all of that. Sure, like all of those are still extremely valid, but what we've seen so far has been everything that you hoped to see from Rob. Um, you know, he fits this team perfectly. Um, you know, the, everything is like the when he's on the floor, it's been pretty seamless. So, um, yeah, I think uh, like certainly would have been a, a much different game against the Spurs, and I, I think uh, it's probably start uh, probably time to uh, revisit certain starting conversations that we've that we've had in the past. Yes, yes, indeed. And he didn't play against Oklahoma City. Right. So, so it, it's, I don't want to, I don't want to say that 
uh, all of the stuff that the Celtics have been dealing with recently is is part of working Rob back in. But also, working Rob back in does create a little bit of a kind of, you know, turbulence, let's call it. And and can we talk some of the OKC game up to the turbulence that that maybe, maybe considering that the Celtics let let OKC dunk everything. I mean, just every decimate the rim. So Rob being back there, who knows how many of those dunks it might have prevented. Uh, but I'm not saying that to excuse their worst performance of the season. But point point is, Rob makes a difference, and I do think that there's a mentality where you're going to be either be super aggressive and not worry about getting burnt because Rob's back there and you, you, that's your defense, or you got to back off and not get burnt and, and let teams kind of step into shots. So Rob being back, it does change a lot about this team. And they, and I'm waiting for the Rob is cleared for 25, 26, 27 minutes a game. So we can start seeing, you know, maybe, Seven minutes stints, seven minutes in the first and seven in the second, and you get up to your 28 minutes, and that's that's fine. Like you can you can mold them however you want. But I, I just think Rob being back and getting the whole team on the same page. Rob is back. This is how we play now. We'll be will be huge for this team and and kind of get them to be back to maybe a little bit more defensive minded rather than offensive minded. Um, real quick, I will say I, I do believe that his minutes limit has been lifted, at least according to to Brian Robb, a Mass Live. So, well, like, it's right, his his he doesn't he's not on a minutes restriction, right? But they're playing him twenty. He he says he's not on a minutes restriction, right? Exactly. Yeah, the team says he's not on a minutes restriction, but he's only playing twenty one minutes a game. Right, so, right. if if Robert Williams isn't on a minutes restriction. And Joe Mazzullo is like, no, he's only playing 20 minutes a game because that's what I think he should play. Then, then we got a real problem. And I don't right. think Joe Mazzullo, Joe Mazzullo does not strike me, you know, he of the super extended minutes for every good player on the team, he doesn't strike me as a guy who's only going to play Rob 21 minutes. You know? I mean, yeah, that, yeah. I mean, does he? No, no, I, I think that's I think that's fair to say. Um, I, I do wonder to an extent, you know, h- how much he's limiting Rob's minutes as part of what you were saying before. Like this will create turbulence, like working him back in. Um, you know, like like is like is has that been part of it? Because there is a built-in excuse to keep Rob on the bench, right? There's not a built-in excuse to cut some of Derek White's minutes. There's not a built-in excuse to cut Al Horford's minutes. Like those guys have been really good. Like in all of their, you know, all of their minutes, those guys have been excellent. So with Rob, at least you can kind of have the, the, the little bit of like an, ah, I mean, you know, we're just try, trying to keep him healthy for the long haul, you know, try to like, at least, at least you can kind of kind of slide that one under the radar. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, either way, I, I, I think you're right, but the kind of the, the devil's advocate of it, I think is like, Hey, like, this has already been built in. Like they, they've already done well with these other guys. At least Rob has the excuse of, um, you know, just, just health. But, but keeping them healthy for the long haul is a minutes restriction to me. Right. right. It may not, may not be officially the training staff has said we can only play him 22 minutes and that's the absolute limit. But if they're saying to him, Hey, he's not on a minutes restriction. This, look, I'm not putting it beyond Joe Mazzulla to play semantics. He yeah. is like, if there's he, nothing else, that man loves semantics, loves them, <laughs> loves them. Like Rob loves jumping. He <laughs> is, uh, you know, post games. He, look, what did he say again the last night? Oh, I mean, like, I like Joe. Joe is oh, yeah. let me press yep. all this thing. Super nice guy. I think I, I kind of like the way he thinks. Um, I, I, I like, even though I might not agree with him all the time, I do like the fact that he's challenging kind of some of the norms out there. Yeah, like, I let's, do too. you know, let's challenge those things, even though it's something that I think is maybe written in stone, there's nothing wrong with the, Hey, let's just chisel the stone and see if maybe, maybe there's something else in there, whatever. Fine. So I want to preface all this by saying, I, I'm not saying this in a negative way against Joe Missoula, but when, uh, 
Abby, after the Spurs game, asked him a question of something like, how does it feel uh, to go home with, I think it was, how does it feel to go home with two wins on this road trip? And he said, well, we're going home anyway. They weren't going to let us stay here. I'm like, okay, dude, come on, come on. You know what she's asking. And right. he just likes to play, which again, I'm, I'm fine with that because, Hey, you want to challenge me as a reporter to ask better questions or phrase it a certain way. I will take that challenge. I will phrase my questions in, in ways that kind of like hopefully force an answer, yeah. but he loves semantics and the semantics of no, Rob's not on a minutes restriction. Okay, but he's still only playing 21 minutes a game, so there's something at play. Because right. challenge conventions or not, Robert Williams was incredibly impactful in that game, and if you played 25 minutes, it might have been a, an easier win. It might right. Have been, you know, so... so I mean, Kendrick I, Perkins on the broadcast was calling for it for most of the second half. I was like, yeah. I don't see Robert Williams out there. Where's Robert Williams out there? Like, yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, I think there's probably a reason, Perk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I uh I'll be honest with you, I shut that. I shut the broadcast audio off. I listened to Sean Grandy. I had to. I couldn't. I couldn't. Uh well, okay. So two things out of this. Jason Tatum said something that makes me think oh, Rob's definitely starting. And I get a question about the coaching staff about uh, when it comes to Robert Williams. I'm gonna throw both of these at Tom Westerholm in just a moment. First, today's show is brought to you by TurboTax. Go to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Instead, meet with an expert who will do them for you. TurboTax experts can relieve you from the stress of taxes and file for you so you can do not taxes. Show your eyes things that are not taxes. Unpack a moving box of not taxes. Taste not taxes. Sing not taxes a lullaby. Hope not taxes sleeps through the night. Grab a saddle and ride not taxes into the sunset with TurboTax 100% expert guarantee. An expert will do your taxes from start to finish so you can relax. Feels good to be done with your taxes, doesn't it? Come to TurboTax and don't do your taxes. Visit TurboTax.com to learn more. Intuit TurboTax, full service products only. Video meeting while expert does your taxes required. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com slash guarantees. And thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Want to get caught up in the league on the, on the NBA in a hurry? Locked On Game to Game. It's on the Locked On NBA feed. If you're subscribed to Locked On NBA, you can, you're already subscribed to this. If you're not, then subscribe. You'll get both. But Game to Game, quick recaps, about a minute or so from each host, giving you each side of the game. It's a great way to get caught up super quick on every game in the league. Check it out. Let's bring Tom Wester home in to continue the discussion about Rob before we get into the question about managing our own expectations. Jason Tatum, after the game, was talking about Jay, uh, uh, Rob and saying, yeah, you know, the the whole, are you in a minutes restriction? No, we'll get your ass back in the game. And he said, uh, I like playing with Rob. I want to play with Rob as much as possible. I start, so because I want to play with Rob as much as possible, right? I'd like him to start too. But whatever's best for the team, uh-huh, right. Whatever's best for the team, star player, MVP candidate who would really like to play with this one guy more often, is this a fait accompli, Tom? He's done, right? He's going to start because Jason Tatum wants him to start. I think so. Um, and, and again, I mean, we're going to see waves from it. We're going to see turbulence from it. But I, I do, I, I mean... When the Celtics construct their team, when Brad Stevens talks about their construction, he all, you know, the big thing is making life easier for the Jays. And Robert Williams and Jason Tatum are just like this, this perfect, perfect match because it's not even just that Tatum has the outlet to lob it up to Rob. It's also the fact that when Tatum gets downhill and Rob is there, you know, it, it just makes it so much harder if he wants to kick it out to the three point line, right? Because they're like, you have to account for the guy at the dunker spot and Tatum and the three-point yeah. line, and all of a sudden, everything is just so much, like, you know, so much more open, so much more smooth, it, yeah. like, offensively. And I think, incidentally, that's one of the reasons. It, it, it's kind of funny to look at the Celtics' on-off numbers with Rob in the game right now. Um, they're like, 
um, plus it's like plus four on their on their overall net rating. So he's like outscoring teams by like 11 points basically when he's on the floor. Um, but a lot of that is on the offensive end. Like he makes Tatum's job so much easier on the offensive end and obviously defense too. For all the reasons that are that are very very obvious, you know he he likes to um, you know he blocks shots with, with the best of them, all that stuff. <laughs> but um, you know it's like like he and Jason Tatum are just so good together and like it it makes a lot of sense that tatum likes playing with him um beyond beyond the lobs but also including the lobs because it is you know it, I, I i was gonna say it's always fun to play with i've never played with a man as bouncy as robert williams i imagine that it would be very fun to play with somebody as uh, uh who can get up as high as rob so um yeah i i, I mean i think again like you said my, my dog is knocking over my microphone um like you said the uh Bear, what's like, your take? <laughs> Bear, Bear's take is more pets, please. But the, you know, like I, I just think overall, it just it, it makes a lot of sense to, to, to not not just to keep Tatum happy, but just to like make his life easier. He has a lot of responsibilities. If he feels like playing with Rob is, you know, it makes him better. And if the numbers back that up, yeah, by all means, just let, let's see what let's see what happens. The numbers back it up. Yeah, let's be do. honest. The numbers back it up. The numbers backed it up last year. The numbers will back it up. They'll continue to back it up do it like it's i think i think i understand that we we made i think we made solid arguments before but uh i i just think it just makes too much sense and if your star player um your number one guy uh is saying do it then i think do it here's my other question and i say this is no offense to ben sullivan who is a tall person but does this team need a big man as an assistant coach? And I say this as like an, I mean, an NBA big man, does this team need a former big man to come in and advocate for the bigger lineups? Because Joe Missoula point guard, all these guys next to him, he, his, his number one guy, Damon Stoudemire point guard. He's, he's surrounded by a bench full of perimeter players. It's a very perimeter-oriented offense, very perimeter-oriented team. With good reason, Rob was out to begin the season, and they have a bunch of really great perimeter players. So it's not its not like I'm saying the coaching staff is full of guards, and so they're, they're only putting guards out there because that's what they like. But I, I think that it might be good, and it, maybe it's too late now, but to have – a a a former big that can advocate for what the big man does and and maybe push for some more of of that in the lineup. I, I don't know. It's, it's a thought that I have. I just kind of want to get your take on it. I mean, it's an interesting idea. Honestly, it's the kind of thought that you specifically would have, right? Like, uh, like uh, as a former know, post player, somebody to advocate for the bigs. <laughs> I mean, um, <laughs> I've been fighting that fight since like high school. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, so me, I, I think Sam Hauser needs a coach. I don't. I think that's what we need, <laughs> but we no, need I mean, more I, advocates for the spot up shooters. Why isn't he playing 44 minutes a game? You know what I'm saying? You see it. Why? Why? I mean, again, maybe if they had that coach, maybe Matt Ryan sticks around. Ooh. You know, think about it. Instead of Noah um, Vaughn. You know, you see it. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, no, I mean, I, th- I think that makes a lot of sense. Like, and, and, I mean, especially, like, the bigs on this team are really important to this team. Like, they're not, they're not the stars, but they, they matter a lot. Like, if, you know, if, if Al Horford, you know, is – like Al Horford being utilized correctly matters a lot to this team. Rob Williams being utilized matters a lot to this team. So, you know, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, having somebody who's, who's got some experience, who's seen what it's like to be a big man and who can, uh, you know, kind of, kind of tell all these, to tell Joe Missoula, this, this guard, uh, how, what it's like to be <laughs> tall, then, uh, yeah, that might, that, that might matter. Hey, 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 point guard, get it to the big man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gotta teach these guys to throw some entry passes, Joe. Yeah, right. I mean, come on, come on. You can't anyway. If there's one thing uh, this I, team needs, it's more back to the basket play. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Uh, hey, we saw we saw Rob playing out of the post. I love. I mean, look. Just as an aside, I'm I'm about to go to break, but just as an aside, 
playing out of the post is so effective for this team. It's so effective. Everybody, like, I want – just can somebody – Where who's got Kevin McHale's number? Just call him up. Be like, dude. Danny well, Ainge is who's got Kevin McHale's number. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Somebody call Kev. Be like, come on, man. Take, take a week out of whatever, like – I, I'm sure he's living this awesome life out in the woods somewhere, but buddy, come on back. We'll, we'll, we'll wine and dine you. We'll, you know, all the Miller lights you can drink, just to have you <laughs> put you up in the hotel, like right across the street. Just come on over and just work with the guys. I'm back to the basket stuff. Although I like to see guys pass out of the post. So maybe Kev's not the right person. to. <laughs> also, right, well, uh, Celtics, so- real quick, the Celtics have one guy who is one of the best post-up players in the league this year. And that is Jason Tatum. Last time I looked, he was averaging like 1.4 points per possession out of the post or something ridiculous <laughs> like that. Obscene. The guy, the Come man is crazy, very good man. at that. I love, I just love, I want to see it. I want to see it so much. Like, oh, God, I mean, even, even just, I'll do it for free. Just let's just talk a little bit about post play. Let's just talk a little bit about pitching, it. You've been pitching that on this podcast for years now. So I, I can, I can, I know a little bit about post play. Mm-hmm. I've been in there for a while. Anyway, uh, <laughs> are we the problem, Tom? Are we the problem when it yeah. comes to some of these Celtics? No. Uh, <laughs> well, are we generally speaking? Are we the problem? I think that generally yeah. the answer is yes. Uh, are we the problem when it comes to the perception of the Celtics against bad teams? It, you know, the collective we. We're going to talk about that in just a second. First, let's talk about Bill Bar. Are you like me? I know I'm talking about me being a big man. Problem is, I'm, I'm a little too big man uh, after the holidays. So I'm hitting the gym again and I'm having my Bill Bar. Because Built Bar is going to give me uh, a delicious treat. Hey, I reward myself after the gym. 17 grams of protein uh, and a chocolate-covered, just wonderful tasting, 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar uh, protein bar that's delicious. And hey, I know my goal is probably like yours. You want to be a little healthier this year. Healthy is actually tasty with Built Bar. Uh, 100% real chocolate, real chocolate. Flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, which, oh my God, uh, and coconut almond. That's awesome. You don't need to wait around to get a box for years. We've been talking about ordering yours at Built.com. Now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. You can head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section, and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. Or if you're close to a Sam's Club, Run on in, grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie, batter, and churro. You can thank me later. Check them all out. Built Bar, it's the way to go. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. You can make your second listen, the Locked On Sports Today podcast. All the big stories across the sports world, 22 minutes or so in the podcast, and it's going to get you caught up on everything with the local hosts the local experts. It's a really fun podcast. Check it out. Let's bring Tom Wesser home in. Tom, here is a quote from Jason Tatum after the Spurs game. And I was like, hmm, he might be saying a lot more than he realizes in this. And he said, teams like that are dangerous, right? When they're playing, when they're kind of playing carefree, the pace that they play at, they don't necessarily have an agenda. They just pass, cut, and try to get the best shot. Uh, constant movement. And a lot of times, regardless of the record, you might get up to play against us. Uh, they might get up to play against us. Those can kind of be tougher teams to guard, especially if you come in underestimating them a little bit. We knew from the jump it was going to be tough. So much, so much in there. Uh, the, hey, they're playing kind of carefree and the pace, pass, cut, just try to get the best shot. Why Why can't you do that? Why can't that every was, team do that? That was you know? my first thought. Yep. And, yep. and, and this, this part of the sentence was the best. They don't necessarily have an agenda. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, they don't have an agenda because a lot of times teams they do have an agenda. Guys mm-hmm. have contracts, which is understandable. Guys have awards that they want to win. Guys have awards that are tied to their contracts. There are all kinds of things that make pass, cut, just try to get the best shot and constant movement that makes that go away. And I don't know, like. I sit there and I think, man, why, why worry about that? But the reality, Tom, is they're worried about that. This is just how it is. 
And this is where I think maybe, maybe we just got to chill. Maybe we just have to chill and understand that the NBA is as when it's a business, sometimes in the second half, when you feel really good about your chances against the San Antonio Spurs, some guys are going to start saying, Hey, this is a great chance for me to start piling up some points and you get away from your offense and then they come back and you're like, Oh crap. Oh crap. Okay. Let's, let's, let's run this back. Let's, let's pull up the lead again. Okay. We're back up to 10, 12. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go for mine because I got, I got things that I need to do. You know, that needs a new pair of Gucci loafers. That all (laughs) is, is part of it. It's part of it. And it's not just the Celtics. It's every team. It's every team. Every team has it. So, it should be on us to just say, you know what? This is how it is. And stop crying about, well, it shouldn't be like that. Well, you know what? It is. You can scream all you want about how it shouldn't be, but it is. So right. wouldn't it be better for us to just be like, all right, this is what it is. And just say, okay, here comes, here comes the get away from the offense, the pad your stats, and let's just move on. Yeah, and I mean, that's... That's not always easy to do, right? Because no. when you when you watch it, you're like, ugh, ugh, what is yeah, this? It's gross. This, this doesn't look good at all. But like, I think sometimes we say the NBA is a business so much that people kind of forget the extent to which it is a business. Like, hundred percent. Like there, there is, you know, I, I think there's a reason why when when guys look, you know, you see a lot of guys like supporting their colleges, right? Like, and and look, I have a lot of problems with the NCAA, a lot of problems with the NCAA model. But the thing that, that, that those guys have is that it, it's kind of this unadulterated moment where they could just be part of a team. And it was all about winning. And like, I mean, for you know, sometimes it's about like getting your drafts, you know, stock up, whatever. But like, I yeah. think it's a little bit easier to sell yourself that like, Hey, I went to this college. Like that was, you know, that was my place. And like the end, and then you get to the NBA and, that you could be traded like and and there's there you're probably going to hear trade rumors and you're probably there's going to be these whispers and then you got to negotiate contracts and and all mm-hmm. of a sudden the team doesn't want to pay you and 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 you know and like you have to hire an agent so that the agent can go argue with the team on your behalf like right. all of right. these things that just like like if you think about it in like in you know in your own life if you're you know a basketball fan it's like like presumably you know at some point you've had to like you know negotiate a contract or or, or try to uh um, you know, and like try, try to get a raise or something like that. Like those things, like th- that's why it's a job, right? That's like, th- it is a business like the, for, for these guys. And, um, you know, the like agendas come with that, like naturally, not in, not in some way where these guys are selfish or anything like that. It's like, no, that's what an agenda is. Like an agenda is like, yeah. I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get a good contract. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get another contract, right? Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay in the league. I'm trying to whatever mm-hmm. it might be for any number of players and like getting people to buy into that. I mean, like, I, I do think that that's one thing where you, you see teams like the Celtics. I think you're right. Like they win a lot of games and they're going to continue to win games and they're going to have a really good record at the end of the season and, and all that stuff. And uh, you know, I, I think there'll probably be moments where, you know, like, I'm like I'm not I'm not calling anybody out here, but there's guys who have contracts coming up who need to prove that they are worth X number of dollars, and like, yeah, like that that they have to prove that somehow, like that that has yeah. to happen somehow. So, um, yeah, I think I think people do need to chill out a little bit about it. I understand why that's not easy to do because totally. you don't want it to be a business. You want like no if you, right if you're a Celtics fan, you you want to watch great basketball. You want to watch these these guys play to the highest level, and not only that. For the first month of the season, you did. You you saw them play at like the highest level that they could that they could get to. So you know it's in them. <laughs> like you know yeah. what they can do, um, which makes it extra frustrating, I think, for people if if they uh, if they don't play that way. But yeah, I think uh, that's a long I, way of saying I agree with you. Yeah, and the, the the killer is, I can hear people saying it right now. John, we're the ones that pay the money. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're the ones, the, the money that they're getting paid, that's us. That's my money. You know, I'm buying the products that the NBA is selling. I bought a Google Pixel. I drive a Kia. I, you know what I mean? Uh, it's my money. And when I pay a lot of money, by the way, for a regular family of four to go to a game and to sit in even the upper, you know, upper level, it's you're shelling out hundreds of dollars 
and your kid wants a jersey and your kid wants some pizza and your kid all like it's it's crazy how much money you spend and you say what why why am i why do i have to accept this they are i'm paying my money so they can entertain me in in this basket and that's yes that is true that is 100% true however at the same time they are working this is yep. their job yep their job is i mean luckily they have the physical talent and the intelligence to be able to play NBA basketball and play it at a high level and process things real quick and read things and blah, 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 blah. There is a give and take. I think fans need to be like, Hey man, I understand that. I'm, I don't want to name names because I'm not calling any one person out because it's everybody. This guy has a contract coming up and that applies to multiple people on every team. Yep. yep. This guy's got a contract coming up. So he's going to take a shot that maybe he should have passed. In the third quarter of a 15-point game against the Spurs. Okay? That's that's going to happen. At the same time, those guys have to understand, like, the, the, the fans are here to see that you, you they want to see you win because you're wearing the name of a city that they love on your chest and their civic pride tied into the, this, like, the, the, the people who sit in traffic on the highway – for two hours and, you know, call Boston or the Boston area home. They want to turn on a game. And when you win, they go, yeah, Boston. And they, they hop into the comment section of a podcast like this. And they scream about how they love Boston and Boston rules and all the shamrocks and stuff. And when fans of another team come in, they go, you know, they, they, it's like little butting heads of the, the cities. So the, the, the players need to grasp that and play to that as well. But fans absolutely have to understand, I think. And I say this so people don't lose their minds the next time they play a bad team and all of a sudden it's a five-point game in the fourth quarter and they go, why? Why can't you blow them out? Right. But I also think, too, the other, the other thing that fans need to remember is that like they're, they're playing other professionals. Like I understand that the Spurs are not – a yes, that's true. Basketball team, um, but like during a season when you're just you're, again you're on the you know fourth game of a, of a of a road trip and all this stuff, like you are playing professional yep. basketball players, and little letdowns can really affect things because the other team is full of pros. These are not these are not bums. These are the best players from their region, from their college. Like like I mean, yeah, yep. Romeo yep. Langford is barely in the league, and that man was a god in like New yeah, Albany, yeah, yeah. Indiana. You know what I mean? Like that, like. Yeah. These are these are great, 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 great basketball players that they're playing against. So, like, the other thing to remember is, like, the Celtics are going to finish the season with, like, one, I mean, pr presumably, you know, like, knocking on wood for all, all any number of, of reasons. The, the Celtics are going to finish this season with a really good record. And at that point, the playoffs come around. And, shit, like, in the playoffs, teams tend to, like, kind of throw out a lot. Of, I mean, they don't, like, throw out the contract stuff, but, like, stuff tightens right. up. Things yeah. get better. The agenda's That's, change. It's winning time at that point. Yeah, yeah. So, like, as long exactly, agendas change because if you win a bunch of games, you're going to get paid. Like, you know, like it, you, you're going to you're going to get a good contract because teams are going to realize they need you. So, um, as you know, you want to you want a great reason to just kind of chill out and just kind of enjoy the regular season. Just remember that the Celtics are probably going to be presumably the Celtics are presumably going to be like a top three seed, and at that point. They can focus on beating whoever is in front of them, and you go right. from there. Like the Spurs don't make the playoffs, the Thunder don't make the playoffs. You know, the, right? And the teams These are that big they games normally because they're not going to make the playoffs. You know, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. It's true, and it is a good point that the bad teams and the Celtics again four, 14 and five against bad teams, the, the below five hundred really teams, really which good. is a really yeah. good road. It's one of the best records in the NBA. It's it's been tough, you know, over the past month or so because they've been up and down. Um, and they should be playing better. It's not an excuse, but they these these teams like the Spurs, full of young guys who get super amped to play the Celtics because they know beating the Celtics will be a big deal. Um, yeah, they, there's and two of them were on the Celtics and really wanted to beat right. them. So. <laughs> right, so yeah. right. I mean, there's there's like about Josh five hundred players really wanted to win that freaking. Game. He really wanted oh to win the game. Gosh. You think of five hundred or so players in the NBA 
right now of all the basketball players in all of the world that want to be in the NBA, this is such a small percentage of them because these are the best of the best of the best. We get we get caught up in saying, these guys suck. Okay. In in relative terms to the Celtics and the Bucks and the Nuggets, yeah, they're they're not really that great. But uh in general, when it comes to basketball, they are unbelievable basketball players. They just don't know how to win yet and they don't know how to play together. Yeah, right. And, you know, they, maybe they're not maybe they, maybe they they're actually the 600th best player in the in the world, not the 500th best player in the world. Right. And that's that's a, you know, that that makes a difference, but salute to Shane well, Larkin. <laughs> <laughs> whole point of this is I, I really the whole point of this was to acknowledge that fans are you know obviously the the lifeblood of the league without fans they these guys don't exist they don't have these amazing lifestyles but at yep. the same time i do want to let people kind of like understand even if you don't dis- even if you disagree with us and you want to yell at us in the comments fine fine yell at us but reality is reality what it is is you can scream about should and and would and what you'd do if you were in the league sorry but you're not I'm not. Tom's not. We're not. I do a lot of things Yet. to be in the NBA right now. I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, my next step is sneaking in. Uh, <laughs> I could, but the, at this point, the best thing I could do is like sneak in with like Mavs gear and, and pretend to be Jason Kidd and and maybe get away with it for like ten seconds because the the, the security guard didn't have his glasses on. <laughs> That's the closest I'm gonna ever get. But this this is what it is, man. These, these guys are out there. They're working for contracts. This is their job. This is their job. Their jobs exist because of you. Yes, but this is still their job. And just like anybody who gets a job, regardless how many zeros are in their contracts, they're working and they're trying to get their next contract. And there's just, these, these are just elements of basketball games that exist. And I just kind of want to bring them to light, bring it to light. And I thought that Jason Tatum quote was incredibly enlightening especially considering how tough it was to beat the Spurs. Not tough to end this podcast. This is it. We're done. I, I think I think there's a solid number of people who hate us now, so I think it's a good time to go away and let people calm down. All uh, right. Well, the closest I ever came to being in the NBA was when Carson Edwards said that I was a really good three-point shooter. So that's – that's a, oh, that, I, just, I just wanted to bring that up. Just wanted to flex I, that real quick. Just want, I'm, <laughs> great way to sneak that in there, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. I needed to do it. Uh, nobody's listening now anyway. <laughs> that's it. We've got like four people left. So to all four of you, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for making this your first listen. If you are not a subscriber at this point and you're still here, then great. Subscribe. Get get uh, get the podcast dropped to your device whenever it publishes. And then uh, get to the YouTube page. Love to have you on the YouTube page. People in the comments all the time. Got lots to say. It's a great place to interact. I'm seeing threads start to build up with a bunch of replies. That's The community is growing. So it's a great place to be. Uh, maybe even a better place than Twitter. So check it out. Uh, and if you are a subscriber, I would love it if you shared the podcast. Tell your friends and everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.